My name is Vikrant Karandikar. They're, they're nice in the sense that uh, they depict color and form very well. I'm an architect as well, so I can relate to that aspect of uh, the paintings. And definitely to the Mahabharat series that I, I can see here, you can relate very well to the story and also the, uh, uh, the way the stories or the characters have been depicted, the colors, the forms, and the, uh, I guess, the, the brush strokes or the strength of the, it, it, it's mainly form, structure, perspective, and the ability to bring together different scales in a, a definitive and a finite uh, you know, form and size. So that, that's something which really appealed to me. And, and the fact that a lot of the uh, human figures and the supporting uh, aspects, be it a chariot wheel, be it uh, something else, there, there's, there's a huge amount of uh, symmetry and perspective and scale to it. So that's something I liked about it. Well, very essentially right up front, let me just say that my architectural life is a completely different life from a life as an artist. The, in a manner of speaking, the architectural life was my bread and butter. It was like basically my, my livelihood which kept me alive, which gave me the freedom to ex experiment with art and to do whatever I wanted to do my way in my paintings without having to depend on my paintings as bread and butter. And uh, I did not need to follow any popular trends under pressure for selling my paintings, I I was left free to ex, you know expand and you know broaden my horizons in my art, and uh, I think if if art had been my livelihood right from the beginning, that might have been a little more difficult, a little more circumspect, uh, which is why I'm very grateful to architecture. I have a lot of passion for architecture, project management, and life cycle management that I do uh, in my. It comes into my paintings in different formats, like uh, I have a very good spatial idea about volumes of space, how to, how to show a three-dimensional or a fourth dimension in my painting in, by virtue of my knowledge of space, how to manipulate space and how to depict those manipulations in order for the end viewer to kind of, you know, get a feel of the depth of the painting, you know, the depth of thought, the depth of the actual physical, geography and the physical volumes and spaces that I'm showing in my painting. You know, it's, it's a controversial topic, art for art's sake, or whether art should have social or, you know, political repercussions. I tend to believe that, I tend to, towards believing that art should have a social repercussion. Uh, it should draw inspiration from life around us, from the past and our possible futures that we are heading towards. And I think, very personally, my art is always derived from personal experience or in some way or the other, sometimes more, sometimes less. Connect I connect these, society. yes, and because my, I don't, I'm, I'm still not a hermit, so I still live in society, whether I live here in Delhi or in New York or wherever in Mauritius or anywhere that I travel. I draw a lot of inspiration from what I see, all my travels, the people, the interesting people I meet, good things, bad things, things that, you know, make me go a little, you know, like, or you know, like, make me think, and these are these are basically the fodder behind my paintings. Well, like I said, my art is the human figure to me is metaphorical as well as real, realistic, as in like it represents me, it represents people around me, and that is the central crux of my painting. Also, a human fi figure is you know, it's 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 something that you can you can a human figure in my painting, be it man, woman, a nude or a clothed figure, is the generic Homo sapien or the generic person or society that we are reflecting. So that, that's, that's very critical for me. If I did a painting using just abstract shapes and all, I, not that I have not done them, there are a couple of paintings of, which are just architectural, they are just uh, watercolors or, you know, even those would have some kind of a human meaning. It is the, some forms are anatomical, whether they be completely inanimate. They are anatomical, whether they, t they represent an animal or a machine or a piece of architecture, it always, has a human connotation. So, a Mahabharata is something which is always going to be relevant. Unlike the Ramayana, which is much more idealistic and perhaps more spiritual or one can say religious, Mahabharata to me is not a 
religious document, although people have drawn that inference from it. It's more sociopolitical. It's a deep, deep comment on life then, and it has a very strong relevance and significance in whatever time and place you transpose those characters and those, in, and those incidents in Mahabharata. It's basically a power play. People go downright horrid and nasty, and they go sordid, do sordid things. They also do things of amazing, you know, like exultant magna magnanimity. You know, I mean, it's all part of Mahabharata. What I like most about Mahabharata is that all the characters in it, be it the villains of the piece or the nobility and the gods of the piece, none of them are either black or white. They're, they're all in shades of gray. I do, have, uh, I do have a couple of other projects that are ongoing. One is, of course, the Mahabharata series will you know, spin on and on. Uh, there's another thing which is very, very architectural. It's to do with uh, you know, monuments lesser known monuments around India, specifically in and around the NCR daily region because we are like so steeped in history. And I also have a few other projects based out of Bengal, which where my family is originally from, although we are like 100 year old Delhiites, but uh, we have uh, family back there and I would like to explore that part of my life. And basically I want to center my, my themes around all the travels that I did in America, in, in Europe, and in India mainly. And I want to bring together some kind of a cohesive narrative of my, by means of my paintings, including some written matter, sometime in the future to bring a book together or something like that. The past is not just something to be documented, to be archived, and to be treated with reverence and respect. Rather, the past can be explored through an artistic medium. The past can be explored through the medium of visual arts in order to enable a better understanding of the past, in order to sort of explore problems and issues of contemporary society through art. And this is exactly what Sautrik Kedas has done via a radical reinterpretation of the myth of Mahabharata in his present Oil and Canvas series with video journalist Ashim Bhattacharya, Ratiyagdi Hotri. <laughs> 